You are listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast brought to you by Birmingham Live. What's he like, Mark? Because I used to get on really well with him from a press point of view. I kind of had a bit of affection for him, like a friendly old uncle. What was he like? Was he was he like this kind of typical kind of head teacher figure? He did have aspects of that. Yeah, he had. Um, he did have aspects of uh, of head teacher, but I think that was just their culture. Like since we've had, obviously, had Claudio at, at Leicester, the Italian, and then we had Claude Puel, who, who was French as well. And I think foreign managers are. They have got that way about them, and Gerard Julio was was no different. He he had that, but I I personally really got on with him. He he helped me a lot. He gave me a lot of game time. He he said the right things to me that I that I wanted to hear. Um, he he gave me pointers about my game. I was still learning, and he he always referenced back to players that he had had previously at, at Liverpool. I remember before that that Tottenham game uh, that I scored my, my first goal in. I remember him saying that he um, he played Steven Gerrard there um, and I think he's, he might have, uh, um, I think he said he dragged him off um, at half time um, and because he weren't ready, but he says, you're, you're ready for this. Like you're, you're more than ready. So he says, go out there and, uh, and do yourself proud and, um, I remember him, him reminding me of that after after the game. And there was no no one more pleased for for me than he was after that game. And yeah, just throughout, he he knew. I felt like he knew what Villa meant. He tried to buy into it. Um, that we had a uh, we had a lot of derby games that that year, and he always used to used to try and emphasise how much that meant to meant to the city um, in his team talks and. Um, me being me being local, I, I knew that, but the, we had a we had, we had a, um, a lot of foreign players that probably didn't know. Um, so he he always used to get that point across, which which I thought was good. Just you know, lived and breathed football. You know, you were out for for dinner with Gerard, and you know, he'd be sat there, he'd have a little notebook, um, and he'd always be pulling it out and sketching out, you know, players he'd been scouting or looking at and formations and what he just lived. It was. Um, I love that. It's very infectious, that, that enthusiasm for the game. And, um, you know, he'd come in and, and he had his approach and his philosophy and, and hadn't had a pre-season, comes in sort of early September time, which is tricky and challenging, and, and had started to get things to work and, and had a lot of plans for, for the summer, um, which were exciting. And, you know, I won't go into them, but, you know, names of players that you look now and go, blimey, they were there, you know, and sort of stuff which was in the offing. But, yeah, sadly, the... Um, you know the the health issues just derailed that, and you know you do you look back and go, sort of what if? You know, it could have been a sliding doors moment, couldn't it really? Um, and 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 it had had he stayed sort of fit and healthy and been able to um, sort of build, then you know, there was no reason not to be optimistic about that. I'm fascinated to know what was in this notebook, Paul. You've um, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you're not you're not you, can you not divulge a couple of the names. <laughs> You know what? It's just you know, a lot of players who certainly, <laughs> certainly from France, who you know over the the subsequent years, you know, did come over to England and and were successful and sort of you know, again, Gerard was using his knowledge and using his connections. So um, yeah, it would have been uh, yeah, he, uh, he's a he's a really you know, top man and um, yeah, a lot of affection for Gerard as well. I seem to recall being at a press conference back in those days at Bodymore, and uh, he likened you to Xavi and Iniesta. <laughs> That was the end of me, that was. <laughs> Obviously, my family and your mates and all that are on the phone to you straight away when they see things like that. But coming from a manager like that, it's if they're seeing good things about you, it's a positive. So it was a, that. that's another thing. Obviously, little things like that, you try not to read too much into it, but obviously people are texting you and saying, look what he's saying about you and, and all that. And he's managed top, top players in the past, so it was... It was Brilliant to hear thing coming from a top top manager like that. From my experience with, of, of Gerard as well, that's that's something that is intended to kind of give you confidence rather than something that's supposed to set you up. Is that the way you you kind of interpreted it? Yeah, of course. It's just to keep you keep you going. Obviously, um, if you're going through a good pa- patch or a bad patch, manager will say things like things like that to try and keep you going and keep your confidence up. So. I was doing well at the time, if I recall rightly, and I think he was just trying to get that bit extra out of me. And obviously, 
by saying that he thought it could have happened. So no doubt he didn't mean it because he's two of the best players to ever probably play in my my lifetime. What were your feelings when when Julio could no longer continue and, and and Gary McAllister had to leave the club as well? How did you how did you view that? It was a sad day. Obviously, I've been waiting for my chance for two or three years, whatever it would have been, and he obviously seen me as being a big part of his plans for Aston Villa. So to see that manager then leave and for the circumstances that he left with as well weren't, weren't great. So it was a sad day for me. Obviously, he made me a big part of his plans and I was looking forward to working under him for the, the upcoming seasons. But obviously, his health wasn't too good and it deteriorated, so he had to leave, which was sad for the day for the club and especially for me because... I was playing a lot under him and when he left I didn't really play a kick with him. Right? I had a great time with Gerard earlier. He was he a was very caring person. Uh, he just had to make a decision and I had to really, really understand that because he just wanted to do the best of the team and as, as uh, any manager he wants to play the best players and at that time uh, he want he, he told them Macun was was better player for me. So for me, I had to prove him wrong. I had to make sure that I would change his view about it, and I managed to do that. And he was uh, at the end. He was a person who came and shake my hand, and he said he was wrong with the decision, but he was really he was really relieved and really happy that I stood and stood like a, like everybody else would tell him what kind of person I was. But he had to underst- understand himself. And he managed to do that. He shake my hands, he apologized, and he said, you know what, I was wrong. And I'm glad that you didn't give up on me first and in the team. Because if you remember that season, um, we were in trouble and we went on, uh, on I think in the last 10 games, we went with uh, eight wins, one loss and one draw. And he managed to finish uh, 11 of that season. So he was a, he was a, as a good man. He was paying a lot of attention to to the details. He wanted the team to play in a certain way. Uh, obviously, the team wasn't responding the way he wanted them to play, which made it even more difficult. And um, uh, overall, I was quite happy. I was I never had problem with any manager. I know that they had to make decision, but overall, if I had to sum it up, I would say he was, he, he's a very positive manager who I've learned a lot. He, he taught me a lot as well. Thank you for listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please let us know. We love hearing your feedback. We'll be back soon with another episode. Until then, up the villa.